innovative everywhere. We are Sabrek. Our inboxes are still under attack, and according to statistics, the average users are receiving up to 16 malicious spam emails every month. You should see my inbox. Even if you only have 20 employees, that's 320 times per month that you have to trust their ability to pick up potential phishing attempts so you don't fall victim. We have Sabric CEO back in the loft to help us hashtag wise up about phishing and explain how we can avoid falling for the scam. Welcome back, Helene. Thank you, Bonnie. So, why is phishing such a, a popular form of cybercrime? Because it's lucrative for the criminals. Unfortunately, people are still responding to phishing emails. And so, for as long as people continue to respond, it's lucrative for the criminals because they're getting all the information they require um, with not much effort other than having sent out an email. Um, and they get enough information that allows them to utilize your banking facilities, to utilize your bank card, to buy online um, as if they were you. So unfortunately, that's still very prevalent. And I think the, the thing that's difficult for people is that the, the, the way in which the phishing mails are couched becomes better and more convincing as time goes. You know, and really, again, it's all about the criminal manipulating you yeah. uh, emotionally. Um, we, we, I heard the other day somebody talking about the fact that they got a call um, and, and, of course, uh, somebody else spoke about an email that they got that purportedly came from their bank saying, we've just detected some fraudulent transaction or what is possibly fraudulent transactions on your account. Um, if, it, if it is so, please won't you click on this document and lodge a complaint so that we can cancel these fraudulent transactions. Now, immediately, people get so afraid and they so nervous and worried that somebody yes. is uh, doing something fraudulent on their account, they don't stop to think for one minute that this may not be their bank that's mm, contacting them. Or to them. look for other and clues. They just, yes, and they go ahead and they click. And when you click on links in unsolicited emails, emails that you weren't expecting and that just comes with this link on it and you ask to click on it, Inevitably, you know you're looking for trouble. Don't ever click on a link in an unsolicited email, even if it purports to be from your bank. Close the email, contact your bank yourself. And also, when you're contacting your bank, don't do so from a link that's in an email. Go onto the browser yourself, go to the URL, type in your bank's uh, web address yes. and go in. Don't click on anything to get in. And that's what criminals do, because sometimes it, you know, they, they're able to spoof uh, where the email is coming from. So it may look like it's coming from a particular person or a particular organization, but actually it's not. Uh, they're very smart in how they are able to, to manipulate people and how they're able to yeah. purport to be somebody else. Let's say you've clicked on a dangerous link and then while you're waiting for it to load, you actually have a feeling, mm -mm, I think this wasn't, didn't, doesn't feel right, because that's happened to me. Yeah. How do you reverse it? Well, look, what you need to do is, for one, you need to then delete that email. Mm. But you need to get someone to check whether any malware has been loaded on your, on your device. Uh, and, of course, if it is, then they need to delete that. But also, if you had antivirus and anti-spyware and anti-spam and all of that, then, of course, you, you could you'd be protecting yourself as well. But the important thing is that even when you do click on a link, and usually the criminal will ask you for a whole lot of information because, again, they're getting you to believe that they're not... that they're somebody else, right? And, and, and as a very good example would be, at this time of the year, people are waiting for their tax rebates. You know, we've submitted our tax returns, we're waiting for our rebates. If you get an email that purports to be from the South African Revenue Service, you're excited because you think, oh, my gosh, here's some yeah. money and it's just before Christmas. So you may, they may say to you, well, we, we need to pay you your rebate, but we need further information um, to confirm your bank details. Mm. Uh, click on this and provide us. Yeah. And people just think, oh, my gosh, the quicker I do it, the quicker I'm going yes. to get my money. But the receiver of revenue would never, ever ask you to do that in a mail. You know, you would be asked yeah. to go into their offices. So it's just about us being alert, being vigilant, staying calm, and, and you know, be wary all the time 
that we are at risk uh, from criminals who are wanting to get yeah, access to yeah. our information. And it's also about us being well informed. And thank you so much for joining us again to inform us on how we can protect ourselves. It's a pleasure, Bonnie. Yeah. So email is one way for cyber criminals to try to trick us, but it's not the only way for them to catch us out. We need to be alert to possible SMS threats too. Join us next week when Sabric CEO Kelani Pele explains how to best avoid smishing. Innovative everywhere. We are Sabrek.